Hi. Last time I did a teardown of this array 3711A electronic load, and as promised, in this video we will take a look at its operation and some of its practical use. Be sure to check out my previous video which I will leave a link down below, and remember to subscribe to my channel and enable the notification, especially if you haven't done so. So the array 3711A as we talked about last time can handle input voltage between 0 to 360 volts and can sync current up to 30 amps. The maximum voltage resolution is achieved when the load voltage is between 0 to 4 volts. And in that range, we have a 1 millivolt readback resolution. And the maximum current resolution similarly happens when the current is within 3 amps, and we have a 1 milliamp current readback resolution in that range. So this electronic load is pretty decent for testing various power supplies and circuits. So I thought I would start with a quick demonstration. Let's first take a look at the operation of this electronic load with one of my beefier DIY power supplies uh, back there which can output more than 12 amps of current between 0 and roughly 25 volts, which should allow us to test the power dissipation limit of this electronic load. And now I have hooked up the power supply to this electronic load. The power supply is back there and you can't quite see it, but it's on right now. And I have it set up to roughly around 25 volts. So let's power on the electronic load and see what we got the readback voltage is. And uh, not sure if you heard, but you did, uh, you can probably hear the relay clicking. And as I mentioned in my previous teardown video, there were three relays in there. Two were uh, there for switching the measurement ranges and one is there for cutting off the output via a bank of uh, MOSFET. So right now we're reading the uh, readback voltage of uh, 25.18 volts and you can see that the electronic load is uh, currently off and we're in the constant current mode. So to set the uh, load up is actually very easy. You can either use a rotary encoder here or the keypad, so I'll show you how to do that. So right now we're doing, uh, let's say we wanted to use a constant current mode, so we press I set and uh, the new uh, value you can for example if you're using the rotary encoder you can use these to change uh, which digit you are adjusting so it's quite convenient or you can just come back here and use the keypad so now let's set it to one amp and uh, and if you can hit ok so that's one amp and press escape you will see that currently still the electronic load is off but we can turn it on so this electronic load has a, a thermally controlled fan and uh, I believe it has multiple speeds but right now because of the load is pretty low so the fan is actually off. But after we uh, use this for a while and have it on for a while when the heat sink reaches a certain temperature the fan would turn on. So I really like the, uh, the equipment with uh, these kind of uh, thermally controlled fans because the fan if it's always on it's going to be very annoying. So. You saw that in my some of my power supplies, including that Amaral one back there, I did quite a bit of modification and to make the fans thermally controlled because, you know, you power on the the power supply. There's no reason for the fan to stay on if uh, it's not drawing any power. But anyway, so this one does have uh, thermally controlled uh, fans. So right now we're drawing about uh, 25 watts. So we can increase that. So again, let's uh, just increase it by one amp at a time. So let's do two amps. 50 watts and uh, so let's let it uh, uh, warm up a little bit and we will hear the hopefully the fan kicks in and right now we're drawing 75 watts roughly and uh, drawing 125 watts 150 watts so there are two versions of these uh, uh, electronic load the 3710A uh, is only handling from 0 to 150 watts this would be the, uh, the maximum power you can draw, but this unit can handle up to 300 watts. So we can uh, uh, we can keep increasing this till we hit that limit, which we'll see a little bit later. And uh, at this point the fan hasn't uh, kicked in yet, but I, I think it should kick in any minute because we are, after all, drawing 150 watts. And as you saw last time, the uh, heat sinks used in this uh, electronic load is quite small. 
so um, you won't be able to dissipate that much uh, power uh, for much per long time. So now you just hear that the, uh, the fan kicked in and uh, the fan is actually multiple speed. So now you can actually hear it's uh, running really fast. Um, not sure if you can hear the difference, but there were distinctive two speeds. Anyway, so we can keep increasing this. So let's increase seven, eight, nine, ten. And uh, the, the voltage drop is because of the wiring here. So let's uh, 11, 12. And I wanted to, um, to test the maximum 300 watts. So let's uh, come back here. Let's uh, keep increasing this. I'm going to change it here. So now we're at 12.2 amps and 296 uh, watts. So it's uh, approaching this 300 watts and uh, momentarily. So I want to see what happens after we uh, exceed that 300 watts. So if I increase it one more uh, turn, and we should be exceeding that uh, 300 watts here. So it hasn't cut off yet. Um, I believe this has some built-in built uh, margin, and you can actually increase it slightly above the rated uh, voltage, uh, sorry, rated uh, uh, wattage, rather. So right now, we are sitting at uh, 301 watts and so far everything is uh, behaving pretty well. So let me keep increasing. 303 watts, 306 watts, 308 watts, 309 watts, and you can hear that uh, um, so roughly at uh, 100, sorry, roughly at uh, 310 um, watts or thereabouts, the, uh, the unit uh, cut off the output and right now it's off to protect the unit from uh, being overloaded. And so let's uh, see if we, if we were to decrease this, does it come back on? No, so now you basically just turn off until we uh, manually re-enable the load. So for example, we can re-enable the load here, and not a problem. So let's try to uh, find our limit again. 309, yep, so right there about. So let's say 300, so 308 is fine. So let's uh, do the milliamp here. I mean, not milliamp, the tens milliamp. 309. 300, yep, so it does seem that uh, the uh, threshold is uh, 310 watts. Okay, so that's good to know. And you do hear this uh, beeping noise to let you know that uh, um, it entered the protection mode. So that's kind of a uh, how this unit works. Of course, you can always uh, set a different ways to for the power dissipation, and you can. Right now, we're using the constant uh, current mode. And by the way, you just hear the uh, the, the fan actually uh, was uh, throttled down a little bit before it uh, cut off. So we can actually set different uh, modes, and we can use, for example, constant resistance mode, and you can, for example, 500 ohms is fine. Where you can do 400 ohms. Let's just. Uh, or 490 ohms, it doesn't really matter. We just want to take a look. So this is your constant uh, uh, resistance. So the idea here is if you started adjusting the voltage, the resistance remains, so the current will adjust accordingly. And of course, you can do the uh, constant power dissipation. So if you want to say, I want to dissipate 50 watts, uh, sorry, I want to dissipate, uh, let's say uh, 10 watts, right, 11 watts, and you can do that as well. Oops, okay. And uh, let's see, how do I power on? Escape. Okay, so that's how uh, this unit works. And of course, all these uh, operations, you can do it remotely, and also you can do fancier things like uh, setting a uh, different uh, power dissipation profile for a given uh, period. 
so that you can, for example, ramp up and down the power dissipation and to test your power supplies that way. So that's the basic operation of this unit. After my previous uh, teardown video, a reader voiced some concern over the possible voltage drop across the uh, terminals here because the sensing is not done right over the binding post, but rather is uh, on the PCB itself, which is inside the unit. And my gut feeling is that the voltage drop, even with a full current load of uh, 30 amps, would probably be very minimal given how thick the uh, connection is. So the next testing I'm going to do is to measure the voltage drop from the board inside to the terminal and see exactly how much we're talking about. So for this test, I just uh, opened up the top cover so I can have access to the uh, internal connection here. Now let me power on the uh, electronic load. And uh, again, I'm still hooking this up to the power supply back there. So right now it's at 25, uh, 25 volts and uh, I'm going to set the load current to 1 amp. And as you can see, it's actually quite convenient. You don't really need to press the ISAT. You just, uh, uh, whenever the range is, uh, whatever the range it is in, you can use the rotary encoder and the arrow keys here to set your desired value. So now let's set it to 1 amp. And actually, before I turn it on, let me turn on my, um, my meter here. So this one is measuring, as you can see here, I have one lead stuck at the uh, positive terminal and the other lead I'm going to poke the uh, the probe the, um, where it's coming out of the PCB and uh, which I will provide a picture here because it's kind of hard to see both places but anyway so I wanted your eye to be concentrated on this meter right here so I'm going to put this into volt mode and I'm going to set it range to millivolts so we can see what the actual voltage drop is. So right now, it's uh, of course I haven't connected anything, so it's uh, jumping all over the place. Now you can see it's uh, off and we're setting at uh, zero millivolts. So let's turn it on. And right now we're drawing one amp. It's 0.6 millivolts, give or take. And uh, ignore the polarity here. It doesn't really matter. We're just looking at the absolute value here. So now let's uh, uh, change the range here. Uh, you know, let's do amp, and uh, we want it to. Uh, let me two amp. Let's say okay. So we're drawing one milli off. Uh, sorry, the now we're dropping one millivolt at two amps. So let's keep increasing to ten amps just to make sure that uh, we get a good value here. And hit OK. And as you can see that uh, right now we're drawing 10 amps. We're really only dropping about uh, 60, uh, uh, sorry, 6.7 millivolts, which is really, really uh, low when you think about it. And uh, in most of cases, this really can be uh, ignored. So let's go back to the measurement when you were talking about six millivolts here, seven millivolts, we're at 24.48 volts. So this last digit is actually only uh, accurate to 10 millivolts. So the voltage drop here is insignificant. And uh, if we uh, keep increasing this, so let's see if we wanted to, let's say 11, 12. So again, at 12, uh, amps, you're talking about uh, 8 millivolts. So the bottom line is uh, even at a full load of uh, 30 amps, we're talking about less than 20 millivolts uh, voltage drop, which is, in my opinion is uh, quite acceptable, especially given that this unit is only accurate to 10 millivolts here. So anyway, so I hope uh, that actually answered the question of uh, the voltage drop situation. Of course, obviously, if we were to extend the sensing terminals to right to the binding post here, we will be able to make the, the voltage drop much, much lower. But uh, even without that, given how thick these connectors are and uh, the uh, connection to the main board, this is quite acceptable.
So the next thing I want to take a look is uh, at how low the supply voltage can go. And the specification for this array 3711A does not really special, specially mention the lowest load voltage for this load, and only mention a range from 0 to 360 volts. But from the conductance resistance figure here, uh, which is less or equal than 0 0.08 ohm, which is roughly 80 milliohm, we can calculate that at a full 30 amps load, the minimum supply voltage would need to be at least 2.4 volts. Now, of course, we're interested in seeing whether we can even decrease the voltage further. We know that we wouldn't be getting the uh, full range current, but just wanted to see how low can we go as being able to load effectively down to, say, under 1 volt is extremely important for testing modern power supplies for electronics. And you may be curious how they came up with the conclusion that the lowest conductive resistance is uh, 80 milliohm. Well, this is actually quite uh, simple. If you just look at the, uh, the circuit diagram here, which we have seen last time, we have four of these uh, MOSFETs in parallel in this uh, power module. And of course, this is for a single channel. For dual channels, you have eight, but uh, only four are in use at one time. So, uh, at the lowest power rating anyway. So anyway, so, so the four are in parallel and each of the MOSFETs, and if you look at the data sheet of the power MOSFET we're using here, it's IRFP460. They have a on resistance of a maximum 270 milliohms. And this add up your uh, sensing resistance and you have the four, you can do some calculation. It roughly comes to about uh, 80 milliohms. So that's how that figure is derived. So now to test the, uh, the low voltage, we're hooking this up with a uh, HP 6113A uh, DC power supply, and that power supply is capable of delivering just above 2 amps of uh, current. Uh, but for this testing, it should be sufficient. So right now, let's, uh, say, let's take a look at uh, um, how much current we can draw, and, uh, and it still works. So right now, let's uh, turn it on. The load is on and we're increasing, let's just come here, increasing by 100 milliamps and everything's uh, fine. And of course we have the, uh, the voltage drop across the wire, that's perfectly acceptable. So drawing uh, the 1 amp, there's no problem here. 1.5, 1.7, 1.8. One point nine two amps. So as you can see, that uh, down at one volt and now is a uh, much lower than one volt. That is not a problem at all. So now let's let me decrease the voltage further to say 0.5 volts, and we'll do the same experiment again. And now we are at uh, zero point five volts. So let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, the current draw situation here. So 0.1 amp, no problem. 0 0.2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, one amp, one point one, one point two, one point one, one point two, one point three. Yeah, the rotary encoder is a little bit of uh, uh, probably needs to be cleaned, but anyway, one point five. And as you can see that at 1.5, actually we were not able to draw the 1.5. The readback here is 1.496, which means we pretty much reached our uh, maximum current that we can, were able to sync at 0.4 uh, volts. And as I, if I increase this further, you can see that this number readback will not increase anymore. And that is uh, perfectly acceptable, especially at this low voltage. And uh, it's actually quite impressive that we can still load to up to 1.5 amps. So my next uh, test will be uh, going even, going down even further. Let's try 0.1 volt. And now you can see that uh, we set the voltage to 0.1 volt. So I, I'm suspecting that we won't be able to load it much more than a couple of uh, hundred milliamps, but let's go give it a try. So now let's uh, see, it's 100 milliamp, and we're no problem. 200 milliamps, no problem. 300, not a problem. 400, uh, no. So we are still able to load uh, 300 uh, milliamps, and the voltage is only at 0 0.081 volts. So that's actually really impressive, which 
So this means you can use this uh, electronic load to pretty much measure any power supplies, even those used in, say, computer power supplies for the core voltage way down to 1 volts and much lower. And that should not be a problem. Now I wanted to talk about the constant resistance mode a little bit. And this is very useful. You can use it as a power resistor and to load down your devices. But one thing to keep in mind is that it does have some limitations. It's not exactly like a power resistor. And you do need to have some minimum current flowing through this load to make that work. So to illustrate that, let's uh, take a look here. So we're going to set the resistor to 500 ohm. That's fine. And uh, let's uh, turn on the load. And uh, let's take a look. So now if I were to use the multimeter to measure the resistance, you will see that it is not 500 ohms. It's only uh, 0.5 ohms. And uh, I can change this uh, resistance here. So let's change it by 100. And you can see that we're not uh, changing much at all, right? So. So basically, uh, to this meter, it's actually right now it's a dead short. And uh, just to let you sh see that this is actually working, let me switch this meter with an uh, analog meter. And uh, the analog meter has an advantage that uh, it draws a little bit more current. So for instance, let's uh, hook up this analog meter right here. Oops, so I have an analog meter, and you probably have seen me using this some of my uh, videos, but uh, uh, let me place it here. So let me put this into ohm mode, and uh, let me also hook up the um, leads here. Uh, by the way, for the analog meters, um, you need to be careful of the polarity here. So this actually goes uh, negative if we were to measure the ohm. So I will show you what it means. And because this uh, electronic load has a reverse polarity protection, so we actually can use this to test to see if it works. Now, this is safe because this one only outputs about, uh, uh, let's see, about point, uh, 1.5 volts, right? And uh, the maximum current is quite low. So, but I wouldn't recommend you to deliberately uh, reverse the polarity to this load. But anyway, so let's now see what we've got here. So now the load is on, and if I were to attach these two together, you'll see that the input but cannot be negative. So, so this essentially is uh, um, protecting this load. So now let's uh, turn on the load, for example. If I were to do that again, and you can see that it automatically turned off the load and also gave you that warning. So which is a very nice uh, uh, protection mechanism. Anyway, so now let's uh, take a look at the actual uh, uh, measurement here. So let me adjust this to make sure it's uh, accurate here. It's uh, zeroed out. Yep. And uh, let me put this on. So right now we're at 500 ohm, if you recall. And if we turn this on, we should actually let's uh, first zero out this meter first. Uh, the meter, zeroing that out. So that's an analog meter. Okay, so now it's uh, nulled out. And uh, if you look, now if we turn it on, and you will see that this needle uh, turned to 500 uh, ohm, right off, on. So 500 ohm. So which means it's working and it's drawing about uh, 3 milliamp. Now let's uh, reduce the uh, resistance here and you will see the needle swings back that, that way. So let's uh, do, let's say uh, 200. And you can see we are at 200. And if you're going down to one, oops, 100. And you will see that uh, this indeed settles on the 100 ohm. And of course, 100, oh, let's go backwards, 90 ohm, 80, 70, 60, 50, and you can see it's bang on 50, 40, 30, 20, ah, 20, come on, 
and 10. And you can see, indeed, we are able to uh, use this multimeter to measure the resistance of uh, this uh, electronic load in constant resistance mode. And that's another reason why I always have an analog uh, meter handy, because I can use it to double check some measurement if the measurement does not make sense. And as you saw that, when using a modern digital meter, I could not measure the, uh, the resistance because this electronic load simply cannot discern the connected device because the current draw was so low. Whereas for this analog meter, the current draw is uh, uh, significant that it can be registered by this electronic load. So, so in this case, the higher current draw from this uh, analog meter in the ohms range actually is a benefit to us as we can use that to measure the resistance of this uh, DC electronic load. And there is another classical use of an electronic load, that is to turn a standard light power supply that can only source current into a two-quadrant power supply that can both source and sync current. This is especially useful when testing devices such as battery chargers, as we can use this technique to simulate a battery under various charging states. Of course, they are dedicated two-quadrant or even four-quadrant power supplies and source measure units that can do the job easily. For instance, the HP 66312A dynamic measurement DC source that I did a teardown with not, not too long ago. But those equipment tend to be quite pricey, and uh, with the help of a current sink like this electronic load, we can conveniently turn any power supply into a two-quadrant power supply. So let's take a look at how this is done. So here is our setup. As you can see that we have this electronic load connected to the power supply back there, and uh, that power supply is currently set to a output voltage of 4 volts and a maximum output current of 2 amps. And now the electronic load is set to be drawing 1 amp, so that uh, this is to balance the middle point where uh, you can still output another amp into your load and also you can draw in an amp. So this is at the middle uh, point of the uh, of the setup. And of course that's an, the uh, one of the disadvantage of using an electronic load with a, in conjunction with a power supply to achieve this kind of a two quadrant operation. So, uh, the main disadvantage is that number one, this load is always gonna be drawing that amount of uh, power. Also, you are limiting essentially cutting the output capability of your power supply by half. But anyway, so with that said, let's take a look. Now I'm going to turn on the uh, this load, and you can see that uh, we are currently uh, drawing uh, one amp out of that uh, four volts power supplies. Now the device I'm going to test is this uh, charger. So this is a uh, lithium battery, uh, lithium ion battery charger, and uh, it just uh, come of my actually uh, the Note 4 uh, phone, but uh, let's plug it in. And uh, now of course uh, there's nothing uh, loaded and uh, the output from this one is essentially going to be making contact to your battery. But now we're trying to simulate that battery. So here um, this is, are the leads actually coming from the same, as you can see there, I just uh, hook it up, basically the power supply. So I'm going to hook it up to this uh, uh, battery charger and uh, and watch what we are uh, and watch the uh, display here. And nothing changed here, but uh, if I zoom back to the far back here, you can see. And uh, so now that is showing 0 0.4 amps, but if I uh, disconnect this, you will see that that comes back to 1 amp. This is because this charger is actually supplying current and trying to dump the current into the uh, power supply, but because we have this uh, uh, electronic load here, and the electronic load is essentially absorbing that uh, current. So now, and uh, also you can see that uh, we, the, the light here is purple because it's, oops, it's purple because it's uh, being charged right now. So if I slowly turn up the voltage of the power supply, 
and uh, I would expect at a certain point, which is uh, the cutoff voltage uh, when the charger detects that the battery is full, and this one would uh, change color. So that's what we're going to do next. And uh, to do that, I'm going to slowly increase the voltage here. So now it's a 3.9, and uh, let's see, we have... Uh, And uh, let's make it uh, 0.1 volts at a time. So now we are 4 volts and 4.1, 4 4.2, 4 4.3, 4 4.4. And uh, not sure if you notice, but when we're changing from 4.2, uh, 4.3 to 4.4, and we can see that uh, the light here turned from purple to blue. Uh, I'll do that one more time. So 4.3. 4.4. So that's because now the battery is essentially charged. And uh, with, the, with the help of this electronic load, as you can see, we have successfully tested this battery charger. Now without the using of this uh, electronic load, it's going to be very difficult to characterize the, the performance and the cutoff point of your battery charger. So that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video, and uh, I hope you liked the video and learned something new. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up, and remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up with you next time.